Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. I just realized that I hit my 100th video just a few videos ago. So this video is all footage of folks like you. It's my way of saying thank you. Thank you to all the viewers. Thank you for all the comments and a special thanks to all of you folks who have come out with me. Now before we get going today, I want to make an announcement. I'm going to take a group of 24 divers out as a collaboration with the Vision Dive Boat on the California Channel Islands. This will be four days on the liveaboard dive boat. We're going to target all kinds of species. The idea being, it'll give you a skill set that you can take back to the mainland, but you'll be diving in some of California's most pristine undersea hunting environments. guided free dive spearfishing. This trip on the California Channel Islands is going to be amazing. There's no doubt about it. But yeah, I do require that you do have some previous dive experience. This is not going to be a situation where we're teaching you how to use a weight belt, teaching you how to clear your ears, use your fins. We're happy to help you improve on all your undersea hunting and learn how to pursue a number of different species, learn how to process those species, etc. But the main goal here is going to be actually hunting rather than the basics of diving. So I'm either going to require that you come out with me a couple of times, and that way I can evaluate how comfortable you are in the water, make sure that you cover the basics, or I'm going to require that you go and take a paddy freedive course. You don't need to take a paddy scuba course, but a paddy freedive course or an entry-level performance freedive course will cover that. There's a number of different places that you can do that throughout the state, and I'll leave some links in the description for those. So everything you're going to see in this video is clients out there hunting. So <clears throat> some days we have gin clear waters out there, some days it's rather murky, but as you'll see in here, it's just a matter of getting out and kind of changing your focus based on how good the visibility is. If it's low vis, you hunt what's close to you. If it's good vis, you can hunt what's on the periphery. <laughs> Octopus! It's up to you, bro. Do you want to keep him or let him go? Say, let him go? Okay, ready? Want to watch? How cool was that? So we don't always let the octopus go, though we do sometimes. Here's Chris with his first octopus. <laughs> Yeah, dude! <laughs> that is awesome! You're gonna grab his head? Yeah. You're gonna bite him right between the eyes. There's a little section between like that kind of bulbous mantle and the tentacles. So you're gonna bite down until you feel a crunch. It has been such a pleasure guiding people. Here's Chris getting his first sheep crab. This was a female, so he ended up picking it up and then taking a look and letting her go. Bye bye back to the reef. She'll make more babies, make more male sheep crab for us in the future. Like I said, some days it's great visibility and this is some Monterey diving. Um, if you come out with me a few times, you should be able to work your way up. You know, it's all based on your comfort level, but initially people will start in the shallows. We'll probably hunt somewhere between six and 12 feet deep. And then as people progress and get more comfortable, they start making drops down like this, down to about 30, 40, uh, feet. But yeah, in these depths you can get perch, you can get your rockfish, you can get all kinds of things. It doesn't have to be particularly deep. Some of this is up in the Monterey area, Mendocino area, Sonoma Coast area, and some of this is down in Southern California. Here's Zach with a nice stringer in SoCal. The general consensus just seems to be it's an absolutely great experience getting in the water. You get to see all kinds of amazing creatures. So here's a little harbor seal that came to visit while we were guiding. I was laying down on the reef doing an espeto looking to see if I could find some sargo for some of these folks and instead this little harbor seal came over laid down on the reef with me. He's just hanging out watching me but notice he keeps looking off to the side. He's also hunting. He's also pulling an espeto. So it's this ambush technique that we use for free dive spearfishing. The same technique that he's using while he's hunting. I always love seeing clients get their fish. This is Hannah with her very first fish with a spear. Uh, she got seven fish that day. 
nice stringers all around. Yeah, I also like to take people out for uh, sea urchin. You know, learning how to dive for sea urchin, it's something that doesn't swim away from you. So um, visibility can be good, can not be good. It really kind of depends on where you are and what conditions are like. But we go for red urchin, we go for purple urchin. And sea urchin diving can be a very uh, easy kind of entry level dive for folks. So it's one of those that I love pursuing. And check out the quality of that uni right there. I absolutely love diving, I love guiding in the ocean, but I also love educating people on the gifts of the forest. Best chanterelle year I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did someone get that big one? Yep, we're going for it now. Yep, let's see. Whoa. Yep, this is the biggest one of the day. day. Yep. Oh, it's kind of deep, huh? No. Nice. Yeah, see, tall. Wow. Look how tall it is. Fat. That looks mm. good. <laughs> you smell it? Mm. Yeah, Stronger smell. That's right. Yeah. Thick. Okay. Oh, okay. Whoa. So heavy. Let's see wow. it. Wow. Oh my God. Bam. <laughs> So my mushroom identification courses focus on using the book and key attributes to speciate specific types of mushrooms. We go through mushrooms that are edible, like the chanterelles you just seen, the porcini you just saw, and these oyster mushrooms. But we also go through and look at certain species that are not edible, and part of this is learning autonomy, learning how to use the book, knowing what those different traits are, and how to use that book in the future so that you can be an autonomous forager. It's also about learning certain species that are easy to identify and good for beginners and other species that should be absolutely avoided at all costs. Here, Edgar shows an Amanita egg. As I always say, Amanita, not going to eat you. This is a candy cap. Not a great beginner mushroom, but a fantastic flavored mushroom. We got some chanterelles here, um, white chanterelles, golden chanterelles. It's been an incredible year for mushrooms. <laughs> and absolutely abundant with all this rain. Um, previous years, you know, it's been kind of hard to find mushrooms, but uh, this last year was fantastic. If you're interested in mushroom identification, this is a winter time and fall time activity on the coast. Coastal foraging also offers amazing opportunities. There are not minus tides that are quite significant every weekend, but many weekends do boast some excellent opportunities. Weekdays are also often overlapping with some good minus tides and I love taking people out on extreme low tides to go for sea urchin. I also love to take people out crab snaring during the Dungeness crab season. It can be very productive and super fun with some absolutely awesome catches. How freaking big this is. I think this one is over seven incher. It's been an awesome day for Kev's birthday. Richard was my very first client. Dungeness crab season is a limited season, but rock crab is open year round. And rock crab offers some absolutely awesome coastal foraging opportunities with great abundance. While we're out for rock crab, we're also poke pulling. And poke pulling is one of my specialties. It's something I've been doing since I was 10 years old. And I guarantee if you come out coastal foraging and poke pulling, you're gonna have a great time. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people I've taken out who have caught their very first fish with a poke pole. Those that have caught their first eel are usually pretty enthusiastic. I'll teach you how to clean it and the general consensus is that these eels are fantastic. I also teach seaweed identification and seaweed foraging in certain stretches of the coast where it is sustainable. We can dry these so that these incredibly nutritious sea vegetables can be used throughout the year. In the fall and winter time, we go for steamer clams. It's been super fun, very productive. These are some of my favorite clams. They're only safe to eat during those colder months though, so it is a rather limited season. During the rest of the year, as long as there are no special closures in a particular county due to extreme plankton blooms, uh, you can take the larger species of clams, including Washingtons and horsenecks, as long as you clean them properly. A part of what I teach is how to find their telltale signs, how to know what species it is based on those signs before you even start to dig, how to dig them, and then of course how to process them safely so that you know that you're consuming safe clam meat. These larger clam species are great fried and they're amazing in chowder or even as ceviche. Here you can see Mimi 
check out her channel, Mimi Fish Fish. She did a video all about it. It's on her channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Digging these larger clams, it's a muddy business, but I'll tell you what, it is a ton of fun and extremely rewarding. So if you're looking for the beginnings of a good date, I'll third wheel it with you <laughs> and it might even feed you something. Uh, definitely, I like to cater to a little sea urchin in the inner tidal zone. I've never tasted any that sweet in my life. And sometimes it's crab cakes. For mushroom identification courses, it's a wild mushroom crostini. And sometimes I just throw some mussels on an open fire or do an Italian mussel boil. Being able to do this has been so incredibly rewarding. I get to meet amazing people every time I take people out, teach sustainable and ethical foraging. One of my favorite things is when people come out foraging with me and then they send me an email like three weeks later and they're telling me that they took their daughter or their son out and they taught them how to forage. And here's a photo of the meal we cooked. That's what it's all about. I just wanna thank you. Thank you for watching. If you live out of state or out of country and you haven't been able to come with me, I just appreciate you watching. I appreciate you leaving comments, I really do. If you've been able to come with me, I really appreciate that. It's been such an awesome experience being able to guide here in California. No cooking today, I just wanted to say thank you. So until next time, keep the old ways alive.